applications okay so there are there are specific applications which run only on mac and there are specific applications which run only on windows some applications which run only on linux but java is an application which is architecture neutral so it can run anywhere you can take your mac environment you can take your windows you can take your linux you can take any environment it it it, it can it is it can run on any of these environments and it is highly secure okay so the so whenever you so whenever you write a code you write in dot java after a compiling it converts into dot plus well that's a byte code okay so what all can java can do so java can run in a browser as an applet it can run on your desktop as an application it it can run it can run on your server server meaning uh, okay i'll explain you and it can be embedded on your device so applets now we, um, let, let's say now um, previously in your in your olden days like whenever you are uh, like what you call in in 90 in 90s uh, you have the mobile phones where you you simply open your snake game or you can open a tetris game it's a keypad mobile so what all application which are running on that on that mobile mobile devices those all are desktop applications only so th those are built on java so whenever you open the game you see a java symbol there it's powered by java so java is that powerful it, it can run on any device so many of many of you can think that okay java like it's an advanced language it will run on only particular platforms and we we need high high and architecture to run it no so it it is a simple it is a simple lightweight architecture meaning um, like based on your usage you can you can build and run it anywhere so as an applet you can run it on your desktop most of application when most of your applications like whenever you download uh, it in a dot exe file right so you just like let's say if you download a zoom zoom application okay whenever you download the zoom application you run it you only install it once and it keeps on running so similarly similarly java also okay a clear till here yes no yes bro cool okay so Uh, uh, th this can be your uh, like um, your interview questions also like then they might be asking like what are the editions which you have worked on like what are types of application which you built on which you built and what are the java editions which you have worked so we have primarily three three versions one is the java standard edition which is called the jsc or j2sc so this edition can and some just the basic tools the libraries to build application and applets stand on applications meaning you don't have any servers there's no server dependency there or there are no api calls it's just a simple like you you just run a simple application like uh, if you want to build a game so 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 let's say if you want to run a run a game on a mobile device what all you need is like you don't even need internet connection you you only need a basic input and output like you you, you key in your input that input will be recorded and then you'll get the output that's a simple application so for for for, for those you need basic tools and libraries so if you want to build that kind of applications you require the java sc edition the next one is java java ee it is called java enterprise edition so what this so most of our applications within our like within our, within our industry like you open like let's say you, you just take a facebook facebook is a web application meaning like you just access the facebook via your browser you go into a browser you just key in the url your application opens so uh, and whatever pages you are accessing them those are those are called the server pages it can be in hst in like those, those pages can be in html angular react any any anything okay so if you want to build those kind of applications you use the java sc the enter java ee the enterprise edition okay so so this edition will have all the libraries to create your servlets your 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 databases to create your to create your api calls and you can also integrate your frameworks the spring frameworks quarkus frameworks so this will be coming in in future sessions you can integrate these frameworks on top of this java ee so this is a powerful edition almost like you can tell most of our uh, industry applications will run on java ee and 
the last one is java micro edition as the name signifies it, it, it's it's a small it's a small edition like like small lightweight edition which uh, which will run on or uh, which will run on your cell phones cell phone speed like um, not you take your mobile phones you take your tablets or you take your um, android devices and previously there were devices called as um, what to call yeah pds so all these devices like there are few simple java applications um, um let me give an example let's say, let's say simple gps a simple gps so if you if you want to like uh, if, if you want to know your like know your location or if you want to like um, set an alarm okay just set an alarm you, you require some application to, to 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 basically process your input and just provide an output so all these applications are very minimal and small in size for those for those kind of applications use the java micro edition okay uh, clear clear till here Bro. Okay. So since now, now, now we know what is Java. Why do you want to use Java, and which version of Java you want to use? You, you now you are clear with them. Next, how to use Java? So suppose you, you are like first of all, like you you are given a Java program. Let's say it's a dot Java file. You, you are given a program, and and the client asks you to just run it. How do you run it? So to run a Java application, the, the very first thing you need, you need to have is a JDK. It is called the Java Development Kit. So what does JDK consist? Of? It consists of a runtime environment called the JRE. Okay, JRE is called the Java Runtime Environment, uh, which is sitting on top of our operating system. So which means now many of you many of you use Windows laptop, a Mac laptop, or a Linux laptop. So this JDK is platform independent. This will run on any device. You, you take your Windows, Linux, or Mac. JDK is compatible on running on all the three environments. That means what you can run your Java application anywhere if you have a JDK installed. So once installed JDK, JRE, J, JRE means Java Runtime Environment. This is the runtime environment which is running on top of our operating system. Okay. So if, um, so whenever you want to run a Java file. As um, as a, as a developer, as a coder, you write your Java application in your own in a Java language. So it is called. So you'll be writing it in a file called .java. So if the machine wants to understand your language, that is your Java language, the .java file needs to be converted to some file. Converted or compiled, compiled to some file, not called as the .class file. So the .class file will have the bytecode in it. So if we now, as a developer, you're writing your code in .java and you're converting that to dot class, which is, which is called the bytecode. So this process is taken care by the JRE, the Java runtime environment. So tomorrow, if you get a question, if if, if you get a question that I have a dot .java class, a dot .java file, and I want to simply compile and run the file, what all do I need? So you only need the JRE, Java runtime environment. Because JRE is the one which is running on top of your operating system, and J what does JRE do? It it only compiles your .dot .java file to the to the .dot .class file. That's it. So if 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 you're given a if you're given a Java class file Java file, and if you're asked to compile the file, what all you need is is only a JRE file. But if you want to edit the Java file. And if if you want to make few changes or if you want to develop the Java file to to if you want to expand the Java file, then you need a JDK, the development kit, Java development kit. That Java development kit can consists of your libraries. Like um, many of you know the C programming, right? Like whenever you you write some code, you you need to import some libraries, the standard input output and everything. Similarly, Java Java also has few libraries. Like if you're writing something, you need to import some library. If you're writing, if you're writing a database configuration, you need to import the database configuration. So all these imports, all these libraries will be taken care of by the JDK, the Java Development Kit. Okay, I'm just insisting on this JDK and JRE because they are very, very important. Like uh, when you, when you're into the programming, you don't like you don't hear much of these terms. But suppose if you want to 
like um, if you are in your initial stages right they ask you did you set up your jre did you set up your jdk so if if uh, if they ask you such questions you need to be very clear there okay but to compare and execute we you need jdk but to run the bytecode alone you only need a jre clear okay so yeah I, i covered most of them in my jdk only so jdk so development tools the heap console everything is is part of jdk and within the jdk you have the jre the java class library so you, you just simply take the class file and you just run it you'll get the output okay mm, now that uh, like now till now what all we covered is like Uh, why do you want to use java where to use java and which type which version of java you want to use and how to and how to use java also you know so um we have something called as ide that is called the integrated development environment so if if you like if you want to edit a java source file you can simply open a java source file in a notepad plus plus also just you can you can open it in a wordpad you do your change and you simply push the code change but if you are working on uh, big complex applications you, you need an ide the integrated development environment wherein you just pull your source code you make all the changes do your unit testing unit testing meaning like whatever change you have done on the source code you need like you need to verify them whether it is correct or not after you do all the tests and then you you just push the source code to your repositories that that's how it that's how the uh, the basic um the, the development pipeline looks so whenever you are on board to a project the, for, the initial thing is the client will ask you to just uh, review the source code which you are going to work upon so for that what you what you do is um so all the source uh, i will explain you what what is git and what is the source code management also in the in the coming sessions so on a high level all your all the source code is uploaded to a to a repository called like it can be in github or it can be in bitbucket or any other tools so source code store there you need to clone the source code meaning you need to pull the source code from the from the cloud to your local machine and then you need to import this into your ide that ide can be eclipse or intellij so if you if you are working on java application it is eclipse or intellij ide so these are the predominant ones which we are like most of the people will be using there are many other tools also you can use visual studio code you can use atom uh you can use you can use any other editors also but most predominantly we will be working on like eclipse and intellij ide for java applications and vs code visual studio code is the one which will which most of the developers use it for front end applications okay front end application meaning like your angular react if you want to edit any html html css files you use them okay so just a minute uh, uh, do you all have like uh, java install in your systems yes no no nope, nope, nope. okay done. so you if you want to like the, the very first thing is like if you want to work on jdk or jre or anything if your first system needs to know what we are trying to install suppose if a system doesn't know what is a jdk then there's no point in installing a jdk so meaning first of all we need to install java from the oracle website okay by default today's today's all the systems they have java pre installed how to check is just use the windows r command and and just type in cmd cmd is for command prompt okay open that you can do it with me and please stop me if you like if you're stuck anywhere and just type java hyphen version so if a system if a system is recognizing the java keyword then it it will provide some output like so and so version is installed in so and so in your machine
So by default, Java is installed on all, like almost all your PCs. Please check it and just let me know if, if you have any issues. Sai Krishna and Lakshmi Prasanna, as you guys know. Uh, you can speak up. I have the organization cool. Good. Uh, Sai Krishna, is the same with you? And and remain everyone in in the call. Yes, version cool. Okay, so and so just the, the basic way if you look to find out the version is Java hyphen version. Okay, now let me share your link. So we are going to use the Eclipse IDE throughout our course. So you can you can utilize this link to download it. Okay, uh, what, uh, like once it is in progress, just open a new tab and click on just JDK. So we're going to download the JDK. Again, whatever Java we have in a system. In whatever Java which we have in the system, that's only a Java. That's only Java. Okay, we need we need to have a JDK and a JRE. So since JRE is a subset of JDK, installing JDK will will give you JDK as well as JRE. So this is the this is the Java JDK downloads page. So based on your system architecture, you can simply download them. It it ask you for login, just you can log in with your email ID and it, it's a free software, okay? You can download them. Anyone facing issues, you can just write, just raise a hand here. Okay, um, once you download your uh, Java JDK, you, you, you can simply put it in your uh, C drive. C drive, program files, Java, and you have a J JDK and JRE. So your JDK is available in your Windows C, program files, Java, this path. 
okay once you do all once you download and just put them in this path what not what you need to do is you need to set your environment variables so this is also most important thing like whenever um, whenever you want to work on your java application when you, when you are setting up a new environment there are a lot of issues like uh, the missing thing is your uh, environment variables because the system knows the system knows that you are using java but your ide or your applications which are running which are running doesn't know where your java is installed okay so whatever application which are running or whatever source code which are running within your id is they need to know that okay so okay my so and so java is installed in so and so directory i need to go and, and i need to go and use the directory use my jdk directory so so the, the default thing which the application uses is the system variables so they, they simply go search for your system variables and from there they'll access your java uh, java jdk's okay so if you're on a windows machine you can just type the windows button and type system environment variables uh, you can take the very first item edit the system environment variables Okay, and whenever you open the environment variables, you have this option called edit uh, uh, environment variables. Just click on them. So these are your environment variables which are defined in your PC. Okay, so these are called your standard environment variables. So if your application is looking, looking for a Java, then it is identified by your Java underscore home variable. Okay, so let's say let's say you know you're working on a, a sample application a sample shopping application you, you just downloaded the source code you you, you imported the source code into your uh, eclipse and if you want to run the application application is in is in dot java but your your id is not able to find out wh where where the java is like it can be in c program files it can be in c downloads or you, could, you or you could have put it in some other directory so what it does is, is come to the system variables. It will search for this Java underscore home and it will it will fetch the value. With this value, each and every application will identify that okay, my Java is so in so and so data and it will it will exit from there. So that's the importance of your Java underscore uh, of your environment variables. So for for you to work on Java, simply add the Java underscore home variable and and just put the path here, your JDK path, whatever you downloaded using the second link. Uh, is it clear? This is also an important step. Yeah, you can open up like if you have like if you're stuck somewhere or if you have any doubts, you can open up. Yeah, Parna, Pradeep, Saiti, Usha, Lakshmi Prasanna. Just provide inputs like if you're stuck in somewhere.
okay once you download this once you download your your id and your java jdk and you just set your java underscore home variable get this session recording yes yeah underscore your home variable we are, like we are going to work on the your id setup and how do you how do you work on the source code how do you clone the source code and and the remaining topics from tomorrow Uh, please share the PPT and uh, the installation steps of Java. Uh, yes, yes. Just data. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone. So.